Welcome to the tutorial on how to ski in Zwift. If you have an old Nordic Track ski machine and a cycling speed sensor, you can ski your way through Watopia. First, you need to attach the cycling speed sensor to the flywheel of the Nordic Track. Since the rear hub of a bike is smaller than the Nordic Track, I have a hair rubber band as an extension. Attach the speed sensor to the flywheel and make sure it isn't rubbing on any other parts of the machine. Next, log into your Zwift account. I'm using my phone app today, so it may look slightly different, but all in all, it's the same. Click on Speed Sensor and choose the smallest tire size available, which is 20 inches. This will keep you from flying past other people on the route and possibly getting the cone of shame from Zwift administrators. Now begin walking on the Nordic track to wake up the sensor so the application can detect it. Once you see it pop up on your screen, click OK. Zwift will take you to a page with a list of different trainers. However, we of course are not using a trainer. Since I'm familiar with the Cyclops Fluid 2 trainer, and I know it's a basic trainer, that's the one I typically go for. I don't know if the other trainers make any difference. Now that your speed sensor is connected, click Let's Go. At this point, you can ride anywhere, but I like for my Nordic Track computer to sync up with what Zwift thinks I'm doing, so I specifically choose the Watopia Jungle Circuit since it's the closest I can get to the Reverse Epic KON. I find that if I'm on a climb, my speed and miles tend to be pretty accurate. Now let's ride! As soon as your session opens, turn on your Nordic Track computer. It might be a few seconds off, but it should be close enough. As soon as I'm able to, I do a U-turn to head in the opposite direction. I also like to change my view to first person since I'm skiing and not cycling. Let's just speed this up a little. Once you see the directional icons pop up, select Reverse Epic KOM to take you up the mountain. Then I just swipe the other distractions off to the side and focus on my ski up the mountain. I usually warm up for 5 minutes, ski for 30 minutes, and cool down for another 5 minutes. Depending upon how much resistance you have set on the Nordic track, you can make it halfway up the mountain or all the way. I find that either way, both Zwift and the Nordic track stay pretty close in distance. However, the more resistance you have on the Nordic track, the less distance you cover, but the harder you've worked out. Let's skip to the end of my session and see how we did. As you can see, I made it up to the snowy section of the mountain, which is nice since I'm skiing. I didn't have much resistance on this workout, so I basically made it almost all the way up the mountain, but I usually have the resistance set to 10 pounds and make it just beyond the first dip down at the halfway point of the mountain. The Nordic track is showing I did 2.6 miles and Zwift is showing 2.7 miles. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I find that switching back and forth between riding my bike and the Nordic track works different muscle groups and helps keep me fit all around. Happy Zwifting and ride on!